a very warm welcome to uh, our seventh webinar in our series, um, Honda Rugby Grounds Connected. And tonight, uh, you'll be aware that the focus is to talk through some of the online tools and online opportunities we have available, and then to uh, get into the nuts and bolts of a pitch advisor visit. Um, a couple of things we talked about in the last webinar that based on your feedback, we're now building in uh, to a webinar of their own. So introductions. Um, my name is Ted Mitchell, National Facility Development Manager at the RFU, and I'm the host and we'll be kind of knitting the various uh, bits and pieces of tonight together. Um, and we're delighted tonight to be joined by Darren Simons uh, from the GMA, he's our key account manager and pitch advisor for Rugby Union. And we'll be hearing a lot from Darren throughout the evening. Uh, also joined by my colleague, Kieran Spencer, who is going to be talking through um, various elements again of the session tonight around the web page and, and the expression of interest and, and various bits and pieces throughout. So we'll be hearing uh, from Kieran. And finally, a name many of you will be familiar with, Alex Thompson, who is in the background producing uh, tonight's webinar. And um, although you won't see Alex, you'll be hearing him when we do uh, some of our polls, which are a key part of the evening. Other thing to mention is we do have a transcript option available. Uh, so that means you can click that on and that will mean as well as being able to hear us tonight, uh, the actual words that we're saying will be transcripted onto the screen and you can read them as well. So uh, that is available on tonight's Honda Rugby Grounds Connected webinar. In the chat, as usual, we're joined by our uh, prestigious volunteer pitch advisors in there tonight. We've got Colin, Martin, Lawrence and Andy. Uh, who will be on hand to get involved, contribute, uh, answer any questions and and uh, take an active part in the evening. Uh, we're joined by um, Darren's colleagues, that's Ian, Simon and Todd who are in there this evening and great to have them on board. And from the RFU facility development team, we have uh, Rick, Adam and Steve, uh, again, who will be in the chat uh, and contributing to the evening. And it's great to have all those people on board uh, to uh, to make the uh, evening as as um, as useful as it can be. So tonight's intent, uh, we'll start picking up the pace. We've got a lot to get through this evening. Uh, the first one is to showcase the GMA and RFU online toolkit. Okay. The second thing we'll do is share some information about the GMA online level one. Those are our two kind of online offers that we're focusing on this evening. Uh, we're then going to move into looking a little bit more detail at the pitch advisor. Uh, club visit and how that looks and feels and, and how you set that up and, and what to expect uh, if that's something that you're going to get involved with. And finally, um, just at the end, uh, I'm just going to be talking to you how you can become potentially or nominate a new VPA. Okay, so they are our volunteer pitch advisors and we're looking to to grow that program and, and, and uh, grow the number of volunteer pitch advisors we have um, across the country. So uh, stay tuned and you'll you'll find out about that at the back end of today's session. Okay, so we'll kick off as usual with our first poll to find out a little bit about who you are, and I'll hand over to Alex. Yeah, thanks, Ted. So that poll is with you now. So let us know your role. Are you a club grounds volunteer, uh, a club committee member? You may be that as well. You can click more than one. Paid grounds person, uh, other contractor or supplier. If you can't see any of the polls for any reason this evening, then please do put uh, your answers in the chat. Uh, just a note on the chat, uh, just keep that as well. Make the set sure the settings set to everyone so we can all join in the conversation there. So um, I think majority of people have had a chance to fill in the uh, in the poll. I'll just give you the last few seconds for a few people and then I will close that poll now. Okay, I'm just going to close that poll and uh, share the results with you. So, you know, the majority of your clubs, grounds, volunteers, quite a lot of committee members on there with 23% and some paid grounds people, and then a mixture of other in there. In the other ones, it'd be great to know what your role is by putting it in the uh, chat function. Over to you, Ted. Great. Thank you, Alex. And it's really useful to know who we're talking to. We love the mix of people we got on these webinars, but also great to see the number of, uh, of, of club grounds volunteers that are involved. And, and as Alex said, let us know who you are in the chat. Say hello. Let us know what club you're from. And we've got people from all over the country. So um, it's nice to connect in that way. OK, so um, 
in terms of uh, the first part of tonight's agenda, we're going to be looking at the GMA and RFU Online Grounds Management Toolkit. And uh, Darren uh, from the GMA, Darren Simons, uh, is going to be taking us through that uh, in a short while. And we're delighted to have Darren joining us tonight. And the uh, the program we introduced and launched on the last webinar, we've really hit the ground running uh, and made some great progress with with Darren and the rest of the uh, the team with that. So he's going to take us through it. But before uh, Darren uh, does that, Kieran is just going to explain to us uh, a little bit about how you can access the uh, the toolkit from our new web page. Kieran. Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming this evening. Um, uh, those of you that joined us pre-Christmas will have seen this before, but this is our brand new landing page on the RFU website. So Alex will put the, the web page in the chat. There it is, just appeared. Uh, so this is where all things Honda Rugby Grounds Connected can be found. Um, so if you're looking for the pitch maintenance toolkit, which is the first part of this evening, you go straight to the landing page you look for the tile, uh, tile in the top right hand side and it will take you directly to the uh, the toolkit page to the GMA. So we wanted to make it as simple and easy for you guys to find uh, the relevant information for your roles and your clubs. No, thank you, Kieran, and uh, good evening to everybody. So, um, yeah, I want to talk to you a bit about the idea behind the GMA toolkit. We're, we're really looking to provide almost a a one-stop shop in terms of support and guidance for grounds people, particularly volunteers across all different sports. So we're focusing heavily on turf maintenance. So when you arrive on this home page, you'll notice along the top, there's a tab that says your sport. So if you hover over this, uh, you're given options for the sport that you're interested in, which as of now, the options are football, cricket, Rugby League and Rugby Union, because these, these guys are the partners within the Pitch Advisory Service. So once you click through there, once you've selected your sport, you'll run through and you'll see six searchable tiles. Um, each one of these opens up a whole world of information with the idea we, we really want to empower you guys to improve both your pitch and your knowledge base. So for example, within materials section, you'll find out about different types of soil, sand, fertilizers, grass seed, just to name a few. You've got some information on tasks and equipment, which gives you tips and advice on the how, why, and when to do things and with what piece of equipment. Uh, you've got seasonal management, which focuses on timings of maintenance and applications of products. Uh, you've got the RGC diary, which is really helpful. It gives you little snapshots of monthly operations and advice and guidance on what to expect from a particular month of the year. So that's really useful. Uh, there's the health and safety tab, which will help you uh, keep on top of any changes in legislation and uh, really just advise on safe and best practices. And of course, we've got the RGC Rugby Grounds Connected tab, which is Clearly a huge part of what we're trying to achieve within the game. Uh, that could be accessed through the final tile. Um, and it will explain how to get involved and all the benefits of being part of the RGC family. There's also a vast selection of instructional videos that are available, uh, including mowing, marking, goalpost safety. Um, I can't stress enough, it's a fantastic resource, which is completely free to use. So. I encourage you to, to, to please visit this and browse these videos and these pages at your leisure and um, also provide us feedback if possible. Yeah, great. And exactly on that point, Darren, um, it's a new resource. Um, we think it's pretty good in its current state, but we're really keen to get your feedback. So as Darren said, get stuck in, have a play around with it, try and break it. Um, but we've got a real commitment to keep improving the resource and, and keep improving the content that's on there. So have a look. Well, let us know what you think uh, and drop us any feedback to our new email address, which is RFU Rugby Grounds at RFU.com. And if you just put in there the subject title of your email, Toolkit Feedback, that'll enable us to to get to it more quickly so um darren thanks very much i mean one of the things in that webpage i absolutely love is the a to z of grounds grounds volunteers and groundsmanship um and it's just a a, a brilliant uh, almost an, an itinerary of everything that might cr crop up and again just a really really useful tool so get stuck in and let us have any feedback that you have got okay so poll number two uh, i'm going to hand over to alex thompson to uh, get your views so it would be great for you to let us know. That poll will be with you now. Uh, 
if we run a, a major face-to-face -face regional rugby grounds connected event in the spring or summer, what would you prefer? Would it be a midweek evening, a daytime during the week or daytime at the weekend? Or, you know, if you're really happy with the online stuff and want to continue with that, you know, say I'm not interested in any, uh, any sort of face-to-face -face events, but wouldn't it be nice to get together? Now we can start to do this sort of stuff and engage. So that's with you now. If for any reason you cannot see that poll, please just pop your answer in the chat function as a backup. I can see the majority of people have now completed it. So I'm going to end that poll now. And uh, I'll share those results with you. So well, it's looking like a midweek evening with 52% is the favourite followed by daytime during the week at 33% and daytime at the weekend. So certainly it looks like we're going to go uh, uh, midweek. I'll stop sharing that now, hand back over to Ted. Brilliant. Fascinating. I say it every webinar we run, but it's so useful, such an important part of the evening to get that feedback from you. And that was a raging debate we were having uh, as a team internally. So having that to factor in and, and model uh, the offer that we provide as we move into the spring and summer is, is as I say, is really valuable. So thank you very much indeed for taking the time to, uh, to take part in that poll. Okay, so... Um, We've uh, we've looked at the um, at the toolkit really quick, really uh, kind of intuitive thing that you can get involved with at your leisure and dip in and out as you see fit. The next thing we, we're going to look at in terms of the online offer is something that's a little bit more formal, and that is the GMA level one. Now, uh, again, on the polls last time, we asked you about interest in, in these kind of qualifications and overwhelmingly came through that people were really interested in. So again, we try and listen and try and build into future webinars feedback from um, feedback from the, the topics that we talk about. So hence, we're going to run through this tonight. And obviously, Darren uh, is going to uh, is to going to pick that up for us and, and chat through that. So, Darren, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Ted. So um, the GMA is part of our work with the RFU. We're currently offering a, a rugby specific online level one course, which is, again, aimed at empowering volunteers to increase their knowledge uh, and help improve their pitches. They are expert led and you will learn more about the requirements of the grounds person and the pitch uh, with guidance on key tasks and maintenance activities. You will learn about different types of equipment and machinery, how to set them up ready for use and how to use the equipment safely. Uh, there's also information on key materials uh, and also the safe use, storage and disposal of these. Uh, you'll also learn more about the performance quality standards, so the PQS, which we're going to just discuss uh, shortly, as it will help you understand a lot more about your report that you're going to receive from your pitch advisor once he's done a visit at your club. So the course is £35. It consists of three modules. It will take about four to five hours online, and you've got a 28-day window from the day you start to when you finish. So quite a nice time frame for you to, to, to get that completed. You'll receive a certificate of completion uh, and you'll get three CPD points or three CPD hours. Now, uh, if you wanna know more about how the CPD points work, there's more information on CPD uh, on the GMA website. So go and have a browse at your leisure. So you might be wondering if this course is right for you. Well. Simply put, it's, it's ideal for the volunteer or new employee to help them develop their skills and improve their pitch. So after completing this course, you may be interested in doing more that range from face-to-face -face courses or even full-time qualifications, all of which are recognized by your relevant NGB. Now, it is important for everyone to know that you do not have to be a member of the GMA to access the toolkit or do the level one online. However, we would very much like to have you with us so that we can support you with your career, whether it's going into full-time uh, grounds maintenance or even just as a volunteer. So the further you go with your learning, if that's a route you wanna take, the more affordable it becomes because there are discounts available on other courses that we offer if you have a membership. Uh, on screen are some of the benefits that are available through the GMA. So in all honesty, if this is something that you would like to be a part of, 
then just get hold of us and we'll be more than happy to welcome you into our little family. Great. Thanks, Darren. Just to reiterate what Darren said there, great benefits of joining the GMA. Um, and many of you uh, on the webinar this evening will, will already be signed up and, and getting those benefits. Um, but the the pitch advisors, Ruby Grounds Connected, volunteer pitch advisors, um, the toolkit, the level one, you don't need to join the GMA to access all those things. They're there for you as Ruby volunteers. Um, over and above that, we think it's a really, really good opportunity for you, for you to get involved in the GMA if you're not already. Um, and, um, and, and, and therefore, it was great for Darren just to be able to share some of those benefits with us. Okay, so our first question for the, the chat, hopefully you've been saying hello. Um, we just want to get some feedback on people out there that have already done some qualifications. Might be a, something that's really uh, straightforward, simple and online. You may have already done the level one. You may have done something much more sophisticated than that face to face. Uh, it doesn't matter if it was last week you did it, if it was five years ago or 10 years ago. Let us know what you did in the chat. Let us know what you thought. Was it better than you thought? Not as good as you thought? More challenging than you thought? Easier than you thought? It'd be really good again for you to connect with each other and share uh, your thoughts and experiences around pitch maintenance qualifications, just building on that information Darren's just shared with us about the level one. So um, that I think is gonna be put into the chat. So I'm gonna move on from the slide and then we move into um, the, uh, the third of our four parts of the evening where we are going to look at the, um, the, the visit from a pitch advisor. Obviously we have volunteer pitch advisors, we have uh, regional pitch advisors, uh, and um, we will tailor the pitch advisor to suit your needs. Tonight we're gonna look at the, the regional pitch advisor visit from the GMA, and we're gonna walk and talk through that process. So Darren is just gonna kick off and give us a little bit of background, and then we'll kind of uh, literally talk through each stage from you uh, registering your interest to the visit happening and receiving the report. So Darren, over to you for an intro. No, thank you, Ted. So this is this first section is possibly a little bit of a refresher for, for those that have attended previous webinars, but uh, the Pitch Advisory Service, or PASS, was originally launched in the summer of 2014. If you could click to the next slide for me, Ted, thank you. So it was originally called the Grounds and Natural Turf Improvement Programme, as I say, launched in 2014. Uh, the key thing is here is it's, it's a massive partnership between Sport England, the Football Foundation, the GMA, the FA, the ECB, the RFL and the RFU, all together with, in a nutshell, really one very specific aim of improving grassroots or community club natural turf pitches. So we aim to provide an enhanced network of support and expertise. And we're now in year one of phase three, which is running from 2021 to 2024. So there's, there's so many different parts of the pass, lots of sort of cogs to the wheel. Um, it's probably important to focus on the most relevant the, of tonight's audience. So the main thing that what, what we can offer you uh, at this moment in time is visits and reports, which we'll be discussing in the next section of the webinar, ongoing support and guidance, whether that's off of the back of a pitch visit or simply just a general inquiry, um, and key sort of advice and recommendations in, in relation to general pitch maintenance or machinery recommendations. We can also offer training and events. Um, the team are actually working on this now. You notice one of the questions in the poll, there was a reason for that. So we are working on that. So keep your eyes peeled for more information on events later on in the year, that will all become more apparent. Um, so here we all are, the handsome bunch. Um, we are available right now. Uh, all of us are in the chat. If you wanna ask us any questions, uh, just going around the screen, you've got myself on the left. Uh, next to me on the right, you've got Todd Harrison, who covers the Midlands. Uh, Todd joined us having spent the last eight years at Walsall Football Club. Um, he's currently in the final year of his foundation degree with uh, MySco Sports Turf Management. Um, in the bottom left, you've got Simon Johnson, who covers the Southwest. Um, very well respected pitch advisor and grounds person, having worked in the pitch advisory service for a number of years. Simon is very active in his county, so I'm sure that some of you in the chat may have already met Simon um, in one pub or another, it's probably the best way to put it. Um, and finally, we've got Ian Somerville, who again joins us with a, with a wealth of experience and knowledge. 
uh, a rich history in both education and agronomy. So we've got a really solid team. So use these guys as much as you can. Uh, this slide shows you where we are, our sort of geographical coverage, if you like. Um, you'll, wherever you're based in the country, you will have a pitch advisor. And it's probably um, useful to know that this setup exactly mirrors the RFU areas as well. Okay, so thank you for that bit of background. That builds on what I was able to share uh, last week. And as I touched on earlier, um, the, um, the response to the launch webinar was uh, exceptional. The number of visits uh, that are happening uh, is is really is really impressive and, and it's motoring um, and we want to build on on that so uh, the idea now is we're going to take you through uh, the journey of uh, a pitch advisor visit uh, starting uh, with uh, with Kieran in a minute who I'll hand over to who will just run through expression of interest um, and any any uh, follow-up information there and then we'll literally walk it through the the arrangement the turning up the what happens when you get there what actually happens on the te on the pitch we'll actually look at some of the specific tests um the benchmarking and reporting uh, and then any follow-ups we take so we're just going to run through this uh, take our time to go through each element so that you know what to expect uh if and when you choose to have uh, a pitch advisor visit so first up kieran is just going to talk us through the expression of interest stage kieran Okay, so you may be starting to get sick of seeing this website now, but this is the landing page, this is the start point for all of our uh, pitch guidance now. So we wanted to make it as simple as possible for you guys to request and uh, and um, organise a visit. So you go to the uh, the landing page, if someone could put that in the chat again for me, but englandrugby.com forward slash RFU Rugby Grounds. Uh, Looking this time at the top left, the expression of interest. And as you can see, it's a very simple, very clean form. Again, taking away as many barriers as possible. We don't want to ask the club for too much information up front. So it's very, very simple. Put the contact details in. At this point, very, very important to make note of the GDPR uh, tick box in the bottom right. OK, so once you have completed your information, please do read and understand the tick box. And if, you, if, if you're happy to, you do need to tick that box because as part of the scheme, the GMA are a third party in this. So we will need your consent to share your details with them uh, to organize the visit. Um, the other thing to mention at this point as well, so uh, we're aware that like, not all clubs um, own their own sites. So it's very important if you are on a local authority site, if you're on an education site, this service is completely open to you as well. What we've found uh, across a number of the visits is that if you are on either of those sites, inviting those partners along to the visit as well can really help that relationship. Uh, might be able to unpick some of the historical pitch maintenance problems that you, that you may have been having. So absolutely not just for clubs that are, that, that are on long lease or on their own site. Please do involve education, local authority partners uh, in, that, in those visits as well. Uh, once that expression of interest form is completed, so that information then comes through to the RFU facilities team at the back end, and we'll do a little bit of extra data crunching on that. So in terms of what we do, because we don't want you to um, have to spend a lot of time inputting data, we will add in a couple of extra fields. So we will add in your RFU region and your lead level which just gives us the opportunity to look at pitch reports by those two data fields and maybe look at whether there's a there's a, any trends around league level and pitch quality potentially. We will also add in your uh, active places number. So if you're unsure what that is, so Sport England uh, have a database of every sports facility uh, across the country uh, and each uh, country's, uh, each country, each site is coded by a number. So we can then again, cross-reference the data that comes out of your report with that database as well. And then the last thing we'll do, we'll just look on the GMA database and the RGC database, just to understand if you're already affiliated to either of those schemes. So once that's done, we'll, we'll populate a spreadsheet and we'll fire that across to the relevant uh, GMA pitch advisor, at which point they'll start to pick up, uh, pick up uh, booking the visit with you as a club. Great. Thanks, Kieran. So again, 
the the key thing here is that you know the, these visits are they're informal they're friendly but there's there's information you know we want to get as much information as we can from you as efficiently as we can so that we get the most and you guys get the most benefit from uh the visit so um hopefully that that's pretty clear we've tried to make it as easy as we can the web page that kieran uh, shared with you uh the expression of interest and then that follow-up bit that we'll do in the background to start to populate some background information ready for the advisors to look at so as Kieran said that information then goes into uh, into Darren Todd Ian or Simon and at that point then it's over to them to start to do the logistical bit about uh, about setting up those uh, visits so Darren just talk us through that how, how does that work is that a phone call is that an email what's the contact that you would make with the club yeah so the, the usually the first the first point of call will be a phone call um, so they, they, they will get a phone call from the, the relevant advisor in your region just to chat through in a little more detail um, your pitches so that we can get a full picture of the challenges that you're facing, uh, as much information that we can get before we even get in the car. Uh, the more information that we have from you, the better. So please help us with the information we need as it is a vital process. Um, we will then fix a time and a date to come and see you. Uh, I would probably ask at this stage as well, please be patient with us. Uh, many of us are visiting up to three sites in any one day. So although we try and be flexible as possible, uh, we also need you to work with us as best you can to, to sort out all the, logi all the logistics. Great. OK, so you've had the phone call, had a chat with them. Hopefully the, 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 you know, everyone at the other end has provided the information and you're, you're on route. You got your day uh, in, uh, in whichever neck of the woods it is. So um, you, you turn up on site. So how does that work? Is that, you know, is that just you turn up, say hello, grab a, grab a cup of tea? How, you know, what's the, uh, what's the drill in terms of the, the arrival? Yes, that's a good question, actually, Ted, because well, I have had certain occasions where you arrive at, at sites and you can't even get in. So, uh, one of the one of really good one to, to sort of suggest is we need to get, obviously get access to the ground and uh, ideally someone there to meet us from the club if possible access to the clubhouse is always good for us uh, and also a cup of tea like, as you say doesn't go miss because a lot of us have traveled uh, quite a long way to come and see you so uh, once we've done that we'll, we'll just sit down for five ten minutes we'll cover off anything else that we might have missed from our chat over the phone. And then once we've got all the details and we're happy with the details that we've got on paper, it's straight out onto the pitches. Right. And as Kieran said, there's not, you know, there's not a limit on the number of people that are there. You might turn up, there might be one person, there might be 10 people, there might, there might be more. It's, it's, it's really down to the club to determine who, who they want to be there and whoever is there, you'll obviously have, have the, have, you know, you'll, you'll kind of embrace that and, and, and work with them. That is that a fair comment? Yeah, hundred percent. I've I've had I've had sites that I've visited and there's no one there, and I can still do the job. And I've had other sites where there's ten people there. Great. Um, you just have to manage that because there's often if you've got ten people there, it might be different people wanting to know different things. So you just yeah, manage yeah. that accordingly. It's no problem. Great. And we do want to try and avoid no people being there. Okay. Excellent. So um, then we um, move on to the pitch. Um, and that's a, a, a diagram and uh, that, you, that you use in terms of the testing locations? Yeah, so on the pitch, we will test three very specific test areas, as you'll see in that illustration there. So these are the test areas that we are using on every single pitch that we test across the country. Now, we do that mainly just for the consistency. So we've selected these three areas to give a fair reflection of usage within a rugby pitch. So anyone who's done any of these testings before, you'll know that in theory, you, you, you could, if you wanted to, test for days. You could do 15 different tests all on one pitch, but we obviously don't have the capacity to do that. And we have these three specific test areas that we're running, and we've done it with other sports in the program as well, particularly football, and had fantastic results with the data, data that we've managed to accumulate from that. So these are the areas that we've agreed to test. Great. And in terms of the number of pitches, Darren, if you turn up at a site as three pitches, that's that's all part of the that's all part of the visit. We will test every every pitch that is played on in terms of put it this way. If there are posts up, they will get tested. If you've got 20 junior training areas, we won't include those within our PQS report. 
but the recommendations that we're offering you can be used across the site as a whole. Great. And I think you're going to touch on later in terms of areas of concern. Uh, that, that's something we'll, we'll pick up on. Great. Okay. So um, you've had the, the setup. We've had the initial chat introduction, wandered out onto the pitch. And I think the first thing you do is, is, is dig the trundle wheel out. Yeah, the first thing we're going to do um, is something that the RFU were very keen on us doing. And uh, we so we, we measure the pitches first off and we check for the safety runoffs. And we also make sure that the, the pitch is in line with what it says. There's, there's probably a lot of pitches out there that think that they're full size adult pitches when actually they may not be classed as that. So it's just a it's a good way of checking exactly what is out there. Yeah, and I think just to build on that, obviously the the, the you know the primary benefit of um, of the of the new program is to get advice out to clubs and, and to, to to you guys and to, to grounds volunteers to help them improve the pitch. You know that that's first and foremost what this is about. But another part of this for us as the RFU is is the opportunity for us to get the the richest data that we've ever had about pitches and about the state of pitches and the size of pitches across the, the, the country. Um, so over the kind of three years of the initial program, we're gonna be gathering so much intel around pitch dimensions. And we're really gonna to start to get a feel as we say that things that we're talking about as being full size pitches might not quite be full size pitches and the different dynamics of pitches, uh, inc including uh, runoffs and safety zones. So again, it, yes, it's primarily and first and foremost and absolutely about pitch advice and improving pitches. But in order for us to be in the background make the case for for funding for um for other opportunities having this new rich data about the performance of pitches the dimensions of pitches the size of pitches is absolutely valuable for us and obviously we think it'll be really good for the club as well um to have that independently verified information even down to to pitch dimensions so yeah that is absolutely something when we were creating this program that the rfu was uh, was very keen on no, that's spot on, Ted. So we'll also, uh, that's a, what you see there is a grass height prism. So we will measure the pitches, um, sorry, we will measure the grass height and speak to you about your height of cut. So your frequency of cut, your quality of cut, and then advise accordingly on that. Great. And as I say, as always, as we're talking through this, any questions you've got, anything you think we, we whiz through, Bob it into the chat and we will pick that up. We've got a, an internal mechanism for those questions to get fed into us. So, so, uh, so shout that out. And uh, that is um, again, just interesting data, isn't it? Something so simple about, about the length of grass, grass height that, that the prism gauge enables us to do. Yeah, that's great. We also laid down uh, this piece of equipment here, which is called a quadrat, which has a hundred squares inside it. And this allows us to measure the percentage of things like grass coverage, weeds, bare areas, and then discuss with you any sort of pests or diseases or or different sort of uh, issues that you may have with the surface. Great, and would Darren, would that go down once in each location or, or is it a number of times within each location? How would that work? Yeah, ideally it would go down the three times. Um, we've got it quite, we've got it to a T now where it would go down once on every pitch uh, depending on time really we put it down once on every pitch for the image purposes but then we would still take the image at those three test areas because when we get those pictures back and we're looking at them on the computer we can still work out what we need to know so it's it, it can save time if we're rushing if we go to a, a site that's eight pitches we'll lay that down once on each pitch as opposed to three times on each pitch, but still take the images, if that makes sense. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. And you mentioned images there. That is, is that an important part of the, the visit and the report, picking up lots of photographs and images around good things, things to work on and interesting bits and pieces? Yeah, uh, you can get a bit carried away, which I found sometimes I might get home and realise I've got something like 35 pictures because as you're walking around, you do, you just take, you just take pictures of what you see all the time. So it might even be a, an isolated area that's dipped or it might be an area that suffers because there's a load, lots of trees so it doesn't get enough sunlight so there could be issues with goalposts there could be animal damage there's there's lots of things that we're always looking for to try and help you guys improve great uh, probably the most interesting part of it certainly for us um, is the core samples it's a uh, it's your engine really of your pitch and it can often be seen as a bit of a journey through time as well and see what all weird and wonderful things might have happened uh, in the past 
um, we'll measure with the core sample, we'll look at your um, thatch, we'll look at your root depth, your soil depth, and uh, it also allows us to do what we call like a textural analysis of the soil. So it will tell us whether you're, what sort of soil you're working with. So if you're working with a very clay dominant soil, you're obviously going to have uh, a lot of challenges that come with that. Um, likewise, if you're working with a nice sandy root zone, we will look at all of these different soil types and it helps us advise um, your maintenance accordingly. Any silly question, um, but I've seen many gasps when Keith Kent has uh, dug a hole in uh, someone's proud rugby pitch. You can take those samples and that's not going to do any damage to uh, to the pitch. No, I think... Um, Kieran will hopefully vouch for me as he's come on a, quite a few visits with me. Is uh, well, we do get it to a point where you pretty much don't even know we've been there. So we're pretty Excellent. good at it. Excellent. Thank you. So, yeah, that's a um, fantastic image there. Uh, just to illustrate that we will flag any perceived uh, health and safety risks, including checking the goalposts. Now, I want to stress to everybody because everybody's probably alarm bells are ringing, but we're not the pitch police. Um, in the same way in which we would flag any issues that we see with runoffs, it is literally just making clubs aware of anything that we see on the day. And if we can support in any way we can, then we will where practicable. We, we're there to, to offer solutions. Is probably the best way to put it. Yeah, great, and I think that's a really important point to make. I think you you said you're not you know you're not the pitch police. This is a supportive, a, a, a guiding, nurturing process. And um, if there are any health and safety concerns, you'll talk them through, you'll flag them, and then again, that might be where the facility development team would follow in with a visit to support in other ways. So again, a really important part of of of, of any kind of, of of pitch review is the uh, the safety of the players and the uh, the duty of care. For the clubs that they have to do that so yeah and that is a, a bit of a scary photograph and then back to the yeah, test areas uh, yeah going back to the test areas i just wanted to probably make an important point that although we have these very specific test areas that we will we will test no matter which pitch we go to because we need to keep that consistency if you feel as a as a club that you've got a specific issue within your pitch that falls outside of this then of course we will test it and we will have a look and we will talk it over with you and we'll find out what's wrong. You may have a, like I said earlier, you might have a dipped area and then we need to do a bit of digging and find out exactly what's going on down there. Um, similarly, you may have a part of your training area. I know it said it wouldn't be part of our PQS measurements, but we're more than happy to go and have a little look underneath, see if there's any issues and it will be documented in your report. So feel free to use us as much as you need to on the day. Great. That's awesome. So this looks a bit scary, Darren. We're doing we're fine for time. So take your time. Just just talking everyone through this fascinating slide around the the uh, benchmarking and reporting. Yeah, it's uh, I, I know it's a little bit daunting looking at that, but it's probably it's probably not completely unfair to say it's it's, it's about the most important part of the process is grading the quality of your pitch and then recommending how to improve it. So. Once we've done all of those tests and we've gathered the, 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 the PQS data, those numbers will go into a calculator, which you can see on the left. So once the numbers have gone in, it will automatically generate one of five levels of quality. And they range from basic, good, advanced, high or elite. Now, where we are now, if we can improve or sustain pitches within the good or advanced bracket at, at that level of the game, I'll be totally honest with you, we'd be delighted with that. Uh, the challenge for the club is to try and raise that standard of their pitch by one grade, particularly if they're measuring within the basic category. But you'll, you'll notice that what's interesting about this slide on the right is climbing alongside the pitch quality axis you've got skills and knowledge so what we would love to see across all sports is the individuals that are responsible for the pitch maintenance growing their knowledge and their skills alongside their pitch improvement so we can help with that uh, that's really where we get the buzz for doing the job that we do we want to improve pitches yes but we also want to improve the individual 
Right. And if you take down those assessment criteria at the left, Aaron, they clearly they revert back to the tests we've just talked about. So length of graphs, the prism, grass cover was um, the uh, the quadrangle. That, so, so it all, all ties together what we've talked about. Yeah, that's correct. And I think one thing I'd want to say here is is that we what we one of the things we've always um, battled with really is the ability to showcase the improvement of a pitch and all the great work that the grounds volunteers do. And at the at the minute, the best we've really got is kind of anecdotal stuff and 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 uh, you know VPAs Keith going and visiting and and um, and acknowledging that pitches have improved. A great way we've done it in the past is just photographs uh, that that you, again that you guys have shared with us to demonstrate the pitches improved. What we're really excited about with this is this will enable us to actually um, actually capture an improvement of a pitch and the impact of, of what we're all doing. Hopefully a, a, a kind of pat, a pat on the back and, um, and, a, and a kind of recognition for the grounds volunteers. Uh, for us, again, coming back to this issue around us having data and intel to kind of make the case internally for more support and more funding. Uh, so we're really excited to be able to show that improvement of pitches over time. And we're going to touch on it, I think, with the uh, in the next couple of uh, slides. But uh, key thing to remember here, this is not about a one off visit. And this actually is about an ongoing relationship where the same test can can take place on a relatively regular basis so we can track the the pitch through a period uh, of time. Yeah, so moving on to the report that you're going to receive, um, you'll receive a detailed report within 28 days of your initial visit. Um, just a couple of uh, slides just to, to show what will be included. Uh, probably the most important one for you guys is that key priority section. So this is where we are suggesting you focus your efforts regarding pitch maintenance to get that grade up. So this will then hopefully result in more games played, better quality playing services, and probably most importantly, the increased participation and player enjoyment. Um, the report will also have information on recommended machinery, training opportunities, useful links to toolkit, GMA, RGC, England, rugby website, lots of really useful information. Just touching on what Ted was talking about there. What we really have to do, and in order to, in order to show that this works, which we have done with other sports in the past, we have to quantify the, the improvement. And that's where we, we talk about coming back. So the idea is to, is to give you guys everything that we can give you to help. And then 12 months later, ideally at the in almost exact same time that you had your initial visit, we will come back and we will test again in those three areas that we tested before. And hopefully, if you've managed to do a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, we will test again and your results will improve. And then that's how we quantify the improvement and that's how we prove this works. Yeah, yeah, great. Great, great summary. Um, so just before we move on to the, the VPA thing, I just want to, you know, to stress now again about the chat function. So if anyone's got any uncertainty um, still about the visits or the tests or the measures or who gets the report, um, we've obviously got a number of pitch advisors in the chat. So ask those questions now uh, and we can we can pick that up. And if there's anything we've missed, um, then then obviously we can we can respond to it in the chat function. The big thing I want to want to stress here is this this uh, it's really important to me with this program is this balance between a friendly and formal um, support mechanism that's in line with everything, all the values of Honda Rugby Grounds Connected, but make no mistake, underpinned by expertise, by science, by um, by measurement, by data. And I think it's the what we're trying to create is something that's the best of both worlds, so that you, you it's on the terms that you want it to be in, but it also is very meaningful in terms of the the uh, the effort that goes in to that back end of it. So, um, so that's the, the walk and talk through the visit, uh, right from that expression of interest through to that report and then ongoing relationship uh, with that. So the idea is to take away any fear factor of, 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 of that, um, that visit, uh, the report, uh, the process that you would be engaging in. And I think hopefully we, we've done that by breaking it down and talking through it and really grateful to, to Darren for, for doing that uh, for us this evening. Okay, so uh, next thing I want to just talk about is our um, volunteer pitch advisors who are still absolutely um, 
crucial part of what uh, what we do and the RPAs and the VPAs will, will work together to, to help uh, to help as many clubs as we uh, we can and um, as I say the VPA the volunteer pitch advisor is still very much a priority for for the RFU and the GMA as well and um, the role of a of a volunteer pitch advisor as we see it is to visit clubs to visit rugby clubs to inspire to guide and advise uh, in in support and aligned to to everything we've just uh, we've just talked about and we're looking to to grow the number of volunteer pitch advisors we've got some really good existing pitch advisors fantastic pitch advisors uh, some of whom are in the the chat function tonight uh, and they're an integral part of of what we do and we want to grow that we want to build on that to uh, to extend our network so we're interested as i say in in anyone that you think uh, would be interested in doing that this or um that you yourself would be interested in doing that across the country okay and we want to build it ev everywhere but we do have specific target areas that we are um that we're really keen uh, and we see some gaps in our provision so really you know particularly if you um if you think that there is someone that you would uh, know about that would be in the north and that's pretty much in the north across anywhere cumbria lancashire cheshire durham northumberland yorkshire uh, anyone in those areas you think would be interested we'd be delighted to to, to hear about uh, north midlands so again what i'm thinking there are kind of staffordshire derbyshire nottinghamshire those kind of areas, North Midlands, uh, people in that area that you think will be interested of particular interest. Um, Southwest, so uh, obviously down uh, in the area that Simon covers for the GMA. Again, any pitch advisors, any volunteer pitch advisors you think would be uh, would be an asset to the Ruby Grounds Connected program down in Cornwall, Somerset, Devon, Dorset and Wilts um, and, and, and all those counties in the Southwest. Uh, and they're moving across the country slightly. Another key target area for us is, is what we just would describe as kind of south central. So there we're thinking about uh, Hampshire, about Berkshire, Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire, and that kind of Thames Valley area. OK, so as I say, we're looking nationwide. So we, if anyone is interested, knows anyone would be interested, then then please let us know. And particularly if they're in those four areas that I've just particularly highlighted what are we looking for in terms of a volunteer pitch advisor so we're not going to sit there we don't you know what we don't do the the vpas is to um is to kind of say you must have a specific qualification or have done something for a, a particular amount of time really we're just looking for people that have got knowledge and experience of maintaining will be union pitches okay um we want volunteer pitch advisors that are able to travel to at least 10 local rugby clubs OK, so this isn't going to be covering a vast area. It can be as big as the VPAs would like it to be. But really, we think for it to be worthwhile, we need to be identifying approximately 10 clubs, including their own club, that they would be able to to, to travel to either uh, through their own steam or on, on public transport. Uh, clearly, part of this is we're looking for people that can communicate confidently with rugby club volunteers about pitch maintenance. OK, don't worry about the, the level of science we've just heard from 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 Darren. As I say, what we want is a bit of knowledge and experience and an ability to communicate that to clubs to help them to to, to improve their pitch. And then the final bit is just a very basic ability to be able to note down information as you go and recommendations into a report. So, again, not the kind of level of stuff we've just seen from Darren, but an ability to use your experience to talk to clubs about it. And to jot down in very simple terms some guidance for them to, to look after and we help you we have different ways we can help you in terms of preparing those reports with with preloaded templates and everything else so don't let that be a barrier to to people getting involved what's the kind of deal with volunteer pitch advisors well you know it is a voluntary role um but we cover travel expenses so any travel expenses um or i guess sustenance expenses if people are out for for long and need to get back to eat we we would we cover those and, and hopefully that mechanism is is pretty straightforward from the existing vpas uh would would say you'll get a load of stash so rfu and honda branded clothing so kind of coats for wet weather and 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 various bits of kit that you can use when you're on the visits but obviously when you're back at your club and, and everything else uh, so that's a, a nice perk 
Um, we certainly would support with any relevant CPD. So we talked about uh, formal qualifications earlier, and we certainly would look to support our VPAs to help them develop with bursaries uh, to uh, carry out any qualifications that they're interested in. But really, the, the main thing is to that we would say is that an opportunity to become a real close part of the RGC family and, and potentially give something back to the, to, the, to the kind of game. And I know the VPAs we have involved, we, we value greatly, uh, have been a huge asset and really enjoy what they do and as travel expenses and branded clothing is all well and good but the reason they do it is because they they want to do it they like they enjoy doing it and uh, and they're giving something back to the game so um there it is that is my kind of whistle stop tour my pitch for new volunteer pitch advisors so my question to everyone out there is do you know someone that you think might fit the description might be interested to to become part of what we're trying to do or are you up for it yourself so I'm sure some of you listening, uh, again, fit that description and, uh, and would like to, to potentially get involved. So um, get in touch. OK, so get in touch via our new email address, RFU rubygrounds at rfu.com. And if you are going to nominate someone, put yourself forward. We don't want a CV or anything like that at this stage. Just drop us an email really simply with the subject title, volunteer pitch advisor, and then just tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of uh, your name, where you are, contact information and the kind of area that you think you might be interested in cover and then we will pick that up and uh, and have further conversations with you to see how things uh, might progress so hopefully some people have picked up on that and uh, and we'll uh, and we'll move that forward so we're moving into uh, the real final part of the evening um we're, we're pretty bang on for time um so i'm just going to hand over to kieran who's uh, going to run through a couple of things, kicking off with a flag around Grounds Week 2022. Kieran? Yeah, so Grounds Week 2022 is coming, week commencing 28th of February. And what this is, is, is a largely digital campaign. So those of you uh, social media experts out there exercising your thumbs um, will be able to share some content. And what this really is, is an opportunity to uh, raise the profile and really celebrate grassroots um grounds people across a multitude of different sports and across the country so uh once that week rolls around there'll be a lot of activation on our on our social media channels as well we're looking against exciting time for us during the six nations so we're we'll trying to get jim to do a couple of uh, pitch side videos but we'd really encourage you to share your own pictures videos of you out and about on your pitches doing work and making sure uh, that those pitches are the best they can be for uh, for the weekend's games so please do try and get involved. Do look out for that on our social channels. Um, just in terms of our on-demand webinars as well. So I have saved you uh, another screenshot of our landing page. But again, you can find our on-demand webinars uh, from the, another tile, the third tile on, uh, on our landing page. So again, englandrugby.com forward slash RFU Rugby Grounds. One of the tiles will take you straight to our on-demand webinars on YouTube. So there's a full playlist of seven uh, existing webinars and this one will be uploaded. I'm not gonna put pressure on Alex, but let's say the start of next week. Uh, so you will have eight webinars uh, of various different topics uh, and various different subjects for you to, to, again, digest in your own time or promote throughout your club. So if you've heard something interesting and you'd rather uh, your club committee or other club members hear it from the horse's mouth, please do direct them straight to the on-demand webinars and they'll be able to pick up that information firsthand. Brilliant. Thanks, Kieran. So um, great timing, just closing in on, uh, on eight o'clock. Um, just to summarise really from my side of things, um, there is lots of support available from the comfort of your own living room or office or, or wh wherever it is you would like to do that. Um, it's starting with the toolkit, informal, and, and hopefully you can get stuck into that, have a look at it and, uh, and give us any feedback on it. But a really, really useful tool that hopefully uh, will become an everyday part of, of, of the offer that we, uh, that we provide. Um, Secondly, is, is, is again, based on the feedback from the last webinar, consider formalizing your knowledge. OK, so again, from the comfort of your living room, that uh, that level one online level one from the GMA uh, is something that you can get involved with as a refresher, uh, just to formalize some knowledge that you've already got as a bit of a foundation. And that, that might be as far as you want to take it. But 
obviously then you can build from there and move through that qualification framework uh, with obviously with our support and our, our backing for you to do that. So have a think. We've always focused on informal support and guidance. Consider now looking at that more formal side of things. Um, as Darren said, uh, the guys are, are here and uh, available now from the uh, RPA GMA program and as are our volunteer pitch advisors. So uh, as Kieran said, um, you know, he's um, he, he's not going to show us the web page again, but uh, get yourselves there. If you haven't booked a pitch advisor to visit, hopefully we've uh, removed any fear factor from that and you can uh, you can get involved and get that visit booked in, get that EO, EOI completed and then the process that we talked through will uh, will commence. And then finally, the plea from me, please do nominate a new VPA uh, or join the RGC family for yourself. And uh, if you do that, uh, you are promised a, a very warm welcome. So as usual, um, before we completely wrap up, uh, our final question for the chat, and I know the chat has been active, is, um, just to remind you to tell us what themes you would like us to cover in future webinars and importantly uh, given the poll that Alex talked us through earlier live events face-to-face -face events that we're we're planning to get involved in in the kind of April May June time uh, once obviously things hopefully are looking easier and uh, we're more able to get out and about so let us know in the chat as I always say, it can be a really focused suggestion. It can be a broad suggestion. Uh, it can be whatever you think. And we collate all that information and we build the program around you. So please take the time to do that. And that's it really from us this evening. Um, it's as always a, a big thank you to uh, to Kieran and particularly Darren, uh, who's uh, hopefully uh, you agree has done a fantastic job of, of talking us through uh, two or three things this evening. So thank you to Darren. Thank you to everyone in the chat. I know the facility development team guys have been active as have the RPAs and the VPAs. Uh, and and um, that, as always, has been a really useful um, part of the evening in terms of the chat function. Um, and uh, I don't think I'm forgetting anyone other than, of course, um, first and foremost, uh, all of you for taking the time to support Rugby Grounds Connected, uh, for connecting to the webinar this evening. Uh, and we hope we found it useful and uh, we very much hope to see you either online or face to face very soon.